Hello, this is Sister Charlene Winston, and I'm coming to you today with this week's Sunday School Bible Study. Amen. We have a wonderful lesson ahead of us this week. Uh, before we get started, we first want to thank each of you for joining me again this week as we continue to study and learn uh, about the Word of the Lord as we uh strive to be doers of the word and one of the main thing that Christ emphasized is to pray always without ceasing and without ceasing and also to uh meditate on the word day and night and so as we study the word to understand what we are meditating on and have it as a sword of our uh the, as the sword of the spirit that we utilize uh in our daily walk, then we want to uh, be able to understand what we are taking a hold of. So as we study each of these uh, lessons, we pray to, uh, that we do get closer with understanding, with wisdom and knowledge uh, to go and be doers of his word and not hearers only. Amen. We're going to get ready and we're going to get started. We're going to first have a prayer. Do have a Father, we thank you for watching over us, guiding us throughout this week, taking care of us and leading us through all hurt, harm, and danger, bringing us to this point. Because we do know, Lord, that there are many that are going on that started this week with us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you took care of us, you guide us, you strengthen us, you hold us in the hollow care of your hand. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are God Almighty, and beside you there are no other. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are our all in all. <clears throat> in Jesus' name, we come to you this day seeking and asking that you will open our eyes that we may see and our ears that we may hear and give us wisdom and knowledge from on high that we may get a, a, a grasp and understanding to use your word in each of our lives as it pertains to us. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen, amen. Our lesson this week is a growing resolve, a growing resolve. And we, it, it is uh, showing that the Thessalonians, we're still in Thessalonians, uh, uh, is a growing people. And that how uh, Paul has strived with them, uh, as we see uh, from March up until this point, uh, the, uh, the latter part of April, that uh, Paul has strived with them to grow in the Lord and to become stronger in the Lord. Uh, <clears throat> and as we know, uh, just as a, a little background on our lessons that we've received this uh, this month, uh, Paul uh, worked with the Thessalonians, uh, and it gives us an example as how we are to be disciples or to disciple those that come up under us, those that get an understanding and grow with us. Amen. That we are to reach back and make sure that they, they are uh, doing okay, that they, everything is going well. As we see, uh, Paul uh, uh, it said, turning to God from idols, as he spoke about the Thessalonians, how they changed their way of life, changed their thought process and made a change in their life. They repented when which repent does mean that you turn and make a change. You don't do the same things again. And so as Paul uh, gave praise to the Thessalonians back in the first part of March and then it said news of the Thessalonians love as uh, Paul went on and continued to uh, stay in touch with this church to uh, build them up, to give them strength to go forward uh, that uh, Paul uh, uh, told them and spoke of their love, how they showed so much love with uh, with their brothers and sisters in Christ, and they continued to do his will and to continue to walk in Christ's statue as showing love, as he said to. Then we moved on uh, in uh, the latter of March also, it said, call to holiness. As they showed this love, they were uh, brought forth into the uh, uh, life of holiness and many times the life of holiness uh, we go through trials and tribulation we go through struggles and this is a fact in our life amen uh, and so th the Thessalonians uh, were going through trials and, and tribulations as we spoke about spoke about back in um, the I believe it was uh, let me see 
It's a call to holiness in 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 through 12. Uh, that's where we spoke about uh, them being called to holiness, and they, they were called to holiness because they were showing love and the way that they continued on in Christ. Amen. Then they uh, uh, said, uh, you are not in darkness. It says, as we follow Christ, we are in the light. And this is what Paul was teaching them, that they were uh, walking in the light. And that was in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 5, 10. Amen. And then we moved on, uh, <clears throat> uh, becoming strong in faith. At the, in 2 Thessalonians 1, 1 through 12, spoke about uh, the growing church of the Thessalonians, how they continued to strive, continued to be what the Lord would have them to be. And in that, they became stronger as uh, they went forward. Their faith got stronger. Their walk with the Lord became strong. And so Paul uh, uh, gave praise to them, uh, stayed in prayer for them because he knew that whenever a sister or brother in the Lord is holding steady, is holding tight, that the devil will come again you and that through the grace of God we shall overcome all his temptations and all his uh, dangling of, 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 of things in front of our face that we shall come through. As the Thessalonians they were going through persecutions uh, trials and tribulations that were severe in that time. They, they, they uh, It wasn't like people were just talking about them uh, like uh, in our time here in the U.S. Uh, uh, no, they were uh, being uh, beat. They was being thrown in jail. They, they, they went through a many things just as Paul himself as he uh, spoke to them many times from the jailhouse uh, writing them letters to encourage and to comfort them into going forth. Amen. Then uh, he says, becoming strong in faith. 2 Thessalonians 1, 1 through 12. And then it said, let no man deceive you. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 12. Paul told them that not to let uh, others that come along deceive them and try to persuade them to Think a different gospel or think a different way, but to stay strong and hold, stand, and say, as, as the word says, stand even when it seems hard. Stand. Amen. Don't turn loose. We are to hold on. Amen. And they were truly uh, c confused and worried because they was going such, to such, through such severe persecutions. The Thessalonians was that. Uh, they were beginning to believe that maybe they were in the last days. Maybe they were going through the tribulation. But Paul told them this couldn't be. Uh, you had to realize from what I told you that uh, when we get to the tribulation, the saints will be gone because uh, that will be the first thing that happened. And then, uh, then the uh, tribulation will begin. And so what you're going through, uh, since Jesus has not come back and got the church then, the tribulation has not begun. You are just going through some severe hard times and this is what the Thessalonians was going through. Amen. And as we see, uh, it said wait patiently for Christ. Paul continued to encourage, to, to pray for them, to boast them up and he said to wait patiently as we are to wait patiently for Christ. And that was in 2 Thessalonians 2 13 through 3 5. Amen. And as we uh, begin to wind up this lesson, uh, uh, this is where we are at today to wait patiently for Christ in a growing resolve. And our lesson is coming from Second Thessalonians, the 13th chapter, the, and the, the 13th verse through the third chapter and the fifth verse. Amen. Uh, I just wanted to give us a refresher on what we have went past over this last few uh, Sundays, and we are winding up uh, coming out of the Thessalonian chapter, getting ready next Sunday to go into another one. So we're going to finish this lesson up uh, with Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, the 13th verse through the third chapter, and the fifth verse. And the scripture lesson text read, But we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit, and belief in the in the truth to this he called you through our gospel so that you may obtain the glory of our lord jesus christ so then brothers stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by us either by our spoken word or by our letter now may our lord jesus christ himself hope uh 
himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good, good hope through grace. And said, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of God, the word of the Lord, may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men. For not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfast of Christ. Amen. Paul continues and ends uh, his teaching, his uh, encouragement with the Thessalonians, but not only praying for them, but asking them for prayer uh, as well, that they may grow strong, and uh, also to uh, ask them that they would... Uh, uh, that he continued to pray for them that they would uh, come out of some of the things that they were going through, Paul and his people where he was, because they were going through as well. So uh, they were each needing strength to go forward. Amen. As we begin to study, uh, go in a little de detail on this lesson, the, thir the 13th verse, it says, uh, in, in the 13 and 14th verse is speaking on Paul giving thanks for the Thessalonians in verse 13 and 14. He gives thanks for, he uh, continues to show that his love, through his love that he gives thanks that the Lord has blessed that they have stood fast. And this is one of the reasons he gives thanks. The scripture lesson text reads, said, but we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth. To this he called you through our gospel so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a wonderful and powerful statement here as we see uh, Paul was teaching them and letting them know that they were part of the first fruits. Uh, uh, the uh, 3,000 that were, were that were saved, uh, uh, he, they are not this group. This is a group that's after that group that comes along and is saved and walking in the word. They are walking it out. And so uh, as the people had scattered from uh, Jeru Jerusalem at that time because of the persecution, these are some of the people that has picked up and been able to go forward in what they received from what had happened. Amen. It's in the first 12 verses, Paul described the doom of the Antichrist and his followers. Now he turns to the Thessalonian Christians and think, thinks of their calling and this destiny by way of contrast. As he does so, he expresses thanks to God for these brethren beloved by the Lord and proceed to give a summary of their salvation past, present, and future, to which he called you by our gospel. God chose us to salvation in eternity. He called us to, to it in time. The call refers to the moment when a person believes the truth. Our gospel does not mean that there are other genuine gospel. There is only one gospel, but there are many different preachers of it and many different audiences. Paul is referring to the gospel of God, which was preached by him. Amen. Uh, as we move on, uh, the 15 verse through the 17 verse is Paul giving an exhortation and prayer for the Thessalonians. He's lifting them up and praying for them, for their safekeeping, for their comfort, for their uh, going through to help them to make it through. It says, so then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the tradition that you, t that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. Whichever way that you received the the, the uh the uplifting to have you to stand firm, to hold to the position you're in, go by that, whether it was word or letter. Take hold of that and make that a part of you. It said, now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace. 
to comfort your hearts and establish, establish them in every good work and word. So in the good works and the words and the things that you do, that God is established more and more in each of you through Christ Jesus. Amen. It says, in view of their superlative calling, the saints are exhorted to stand fast and hold the tradition which they were taught, either by the apostles' words or by their letters. The important thing to notice here is that the only tradition which are reliable and author authoritative are the inspired utterance of the apostle. Jesus condemned the scribes and Pharisees for nullifying the commandments of God by their tradition, Matthew 15 and 6. And Paul warned the Colossians against the tradition of men in Colossians 2 and 8. The traditions we should hold are the great truth which we have been handled, handed over to us in the scarred scriptures, uh, in our different uh, Bible, uh, uh, different, uh, you know, some use the King James Version, some use other versions. I'm not going to get into a, 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 a ramification, uh, understanding on those different types of version of Bible, but as we receive the word from that, uh, we are to walk as doers of the word and not hearers only. It's a having told out having told out his message to the saints. The apostle now prays it in prays it in. He commonly knows his teachings, follows his teachings with prayer. First Thessalonians five, twenty three to twenty four, second Thessalonians three and sixteen. The prayer is addressed to our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father. We are accustomed to Paul's mentioning both divine persons in the same breath, but it is unusual for him to mention the Son first. He is, of course, emphasizing their essential unity and complete equality in the Greek and plural subject. Christ and God is followed by four singular verbs, forms, loved, gave, comfort, and established. What is this but a further indication of the unity of the nature of the Son and Father in the Godhead? And said so the prayer itself is that God will comfort their hearts and establish them in every good word and work, not just encouragement in the midst of the distress, but strength to move forward in the battle. The word retreat wasn't in the apostles' vocabulary, and it shouldn't be in ours either. Not to just to hold on, but to go forward, to continue to do what you're doing, walking in the, in the, in the work of the Lord. So don't miss the expression, every good word and work truth on our lips is not enough. It must be worked out in our life. So in our lives, there should be the order of teaching and doing, doctrine and duty, preaching and practice. Amen. Amen. Now moving on to the uh, second half of the lesson, Paul's request, request of the Thessalonians in verses uh, 2 Thessalonians 3 and 1, as this uh, lesson continues, it said, Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you. He's requesting that the blessing that the Thessalonians received, that he would like to have a part in it. And you know, that's strong, that, that the Thessalonians had received such a blessing that Paul is requesting to receive such a part of their blessing. And, it said, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not all have faith. They are going through trials and tribulation, Paul, them at this time themselves, and they are asking that they are able to, to come through uh, and come out as the Thessalonians has been uh, favorably uh, brought forth. And said, so Paul felt the need for the prayers of the saints. This chapter opens with his request for prayer in three areas for the dis dissemination of the message, for the triumph of the message, and for the preservation perse of the messengers. He desires that the word of the Lord may run swiftly, a graphic picture of the gospel sprinting from place to place in spite of obst obstacles. See Psalms 147 and 15. He also desires that the word will produce the same marvelous spiritual and moral 
revelations elsewhere than it did in Thessalonica. The third request is that the apostle and his co-workers might be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. He seems to be referring to some specific opposition, probably from Jews in Corinth in Acts 18, 1 through 18. The choice of the words of the word unreasonable was appropriate. There is nothing more ir- irrational than people's opposition to the gospel and its messengers. It is something that baffles explanation. They may talk reasonably about politics, size, or a host of other subjects, but when it comes to the gospel, they lose all sense and reason. They even lose control. Amen. The uh, next few verses, Paul is speaking about Paul's confidence in the Thessalonians in verse 3 and 4. His confidence in the Thessalonians. It said, the, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will do the things that we commanded you, that He, they are continuing on. They are going forth in the word, in the work that Christ had given them to do. And even with uh, trials and tribulation, going through uh uh, beatings and everything else, they'll continue to hold on. It said, don't miss the beauty of the contrast between verse 2. Not all have faith in verse 3, but the Lord is faithful. This teaches us to look away from faithless men to our never failing God. He is faithful to confirm us to the end. First Corinthians 1 and 9. He is faithful to deliver us out of temptation. First Corinthians 10 and 13. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First John 1 and 9. And here he is faithful to establish and to guard us from the evil one, Satan. Amen. It said, not all have faith. The Lord is faithful. We have confidence, faith in the Lord concerning you. As Denny has marked in the Lord, you may depend on those who in themselves are weak, unstable, willful, and foolish. Now, Paul reminds the saints of their responsibility to do the things he commanded, commands them. Here again, we have the wonderful and curious, curious mingling of the divine and the human. God will keep you. Now you keep the commandments. While God keeps you, you keep the commandments. It is the same thought in 1 Peter 1 and 5, kept by the power of God. His part, through faith, our part. We also see it in Philippians 2, 12 through 13. Work out your own salvation, our part. For it is God who works in you, his part, that he does protect us and take care of us. If we do our part, we can rest assured that he shall do his part. The last portion of this verse, Paul's praise again for the Thessalonians in verse 5. It said, may the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Amen. That he wanted their hearts to be directed and continued stayed on Christ. Amen. When you keep your eye stayed on the Lord, then you can go forward. You can hold on. If you keep your eye stayed on the Lord, but when we start looking aside, then that's when we come into trouble. As uh, Peter did when he started looking from Christ as he was walking on the water, when his eyes went off of Christ, and start looking at the storm and the, and the waves and how they was go, bellering up against the ship. Then, it, then he lost his his balance. He lost his his, his 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 direction, as we will if we don't keep our eyes on Christ. Amen. It's in times of perfect persecution. It is easy to develop bitter thoughts toward others and to give up because of the duration and intensity of the suffering. It is for the, this reason that the apostle prays that the Thessalonians will love as God loves and will be steadfast as Christ is steadfast. That is a powerful thought to request that they love as God loves and to be steadfast 
as Christ is steadfast. As a summary of this lesson, it said, when we hear the apostasy of many, it is a great comfort and joy that there is a remnant according to the election of grace, which does and shall preserve, especially we should rejoice if we have reason to hope that we are of that number. The preservation of the saints is because God loved them with an everlasting love from the beginning of the world. The end and the means must not be separated. Faith and holiness must be joined together as well as holiness and happiness. The outward call of God is by the gospel and this is rendered effected by the inward working of the spirit. The belief of the truth brings the sinner to rely on Christ and so to love and obey him. It is sealed by the Holy Spirit upon his heart. We have no certain proof of anything having been delivered by the apostle. More than that, we find contained in the Holy Scriptures. Let us then stand fast in the doctrine taught by the apostles and reject all additions and vain traditions. Amen. The first through the fifth verses, uh, it, it, uh, it comes together with those who are far apart still may meet together at the throne of grace. And those that those not able to do or receive any other kindness may in this way do and receive real and very great kindness. Enemies to the preaching of the gospel the and persecutors of its faithful preachers are unreasonable and wicked men. Many do not believe the gospel and no wonder if, if such are restless and show malice in their endeavors to oppose it. Amen. It says the evil of sin is the greatest evil, but there are other evils we need to be pres preserved from. And we have encouragement to depend upon the grace of God. When once the promise is made, the performance is sure and certain. The apostle had confidence in them, but that was founded upon his confidence in God for their for there is otherwise no confidence in man. He prays for them for spiritual blessings. It is our sin and our misery that we place our affections upon wrong objects. There is, n there is not true love of God without faith in Jesus Christ. If by the special grace of God we have that faith which multitudes have not, we should earnestly pray that we may be enabled without reserve to obey his commands and that we may be enabled without reserve to the love of God and the patience of Christ. Let us hold fast. Let us hold steady to the love and the patience of Christ. Amen. As we go forward in, in his work and his will to do what and to follow in his footsteps as his disciples. Amen. We are to do as Christ did. Amen. I pray you uh, study and meditate on this wonderful lesson. And if anyone has not received uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or have not been born again, has not received Christ in their life, stop now and accept him as your Lord and Savior in Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that he is Lord and Savior and that he was risen from the dead and, and speak the word that you accept him as your Lord and Savior and you shall be saved. Amen. And then find your wonderful Bible-based church and begin to study and meditate and learn the word as you walk it out. Amen. I pray you meditate on this lesson and y'all have a great and blessed week.